goblin in there tonight, but there's usually at least a bird or two in here in these woods. Big open oak ridge back there. And then our food plot is up there on top of that far ridge. There's never more than a couple gobblers in this piece, but there usually is at least one every spring. Tomorrow's my birthday, so I'm gonna try to go hunting on the home farm here for a day. There's a lot of people that hunt right around the farm here. And we let people hunt on our place too some, so they might be shot already. It's the last week of the Missouri season. Oh, 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 oh. Not going to talk tonight. We're going to be way up in there in the morning. Up here at the farm this morning. There he gobbled right there. Me and Neely got a bird gobbling down here in these woods. When I was in here roosting last night, I was talking about there not being very many turkeys in here this year. And I don't think there is. Dad does have pictures of a bunch of Jake, so I ain't too worried about killing him. He's a little ways from us, but we're up here in this food plot. We're gonna go ahead and get set up. I don't wanna dive off in those woods and risk blowing more turkeys out. It's so open still. We're down here in this food plot here. I've killed him up here for years. There's a good chance he'll come up here. turkey's gonna come. In order for him to get up here though, he's gotta come to my left. I can hear him dropping. He's just right over here to the left. Right now we're in a little bit of a bind because this opening's over here to our left. And that's where the bird's gonna come up here at, so we're gonna have to situate around, crawl around, get over there on that side of the
and that's all she wrote for that buddy <laughs> holy cow <laughs> got set down just in time oh my gosh that was wild dude he jumped right over that fence look at what we're sitting in right here <laughs> no other place to go <laughs> no we didn't we hadn't even man i'm shaking dude i'm shaking like a leaf hadn't even been set up but for just i don't know 30 minutes or so and i could have swore he had hens with him i heard hens fly down yeah we were sitting on just right over there about 15 yards and we started calling he shut up for the longest time and i could just barely hear him drumming just right over the hill i'm like man we're gonna have to move because this setup, you know, he's gonna end up coming into our left, our hard left. Yeah, there wasn't no way to shoot behind. No, him. no. So we just snuck around here, and as we were sneaking, we were scratching in the leaves, and he must have heard that and started coming. Because as soon as I sat down in this rose bush, I could hear him drumming just right over the hill. And he came up there, he could not get through that fence. <laughs> he eventually just gave up and flew right over it. Yeah. <laughs> that was pretty crazy, dude. He kept poking his head through it. <laughs> <laughs> this is what a mess. Oh, what a mess. Got blood on my hands. Had to set up right here. There's just no good trees up here around this food plot ever. Look at this. That's a big patch of multi-floor rows. Just had to plop down right there and make it work. That's pretty sweet, huh? Whole uh, long spur turkey looks like. Boy, he does have a great big old thick beard, doesn't he? Shetland ponytail. <laughs> like a Shetland ponytail. Hey, you know what else? Today's my birthday. Happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> Shot one on the farm on the birthday. Yeah, I ain't never done that before. Congratulations. That sucker got right behind this fence right here. And he could not figure out how to make it through it. I mean, he seen that decoy and he was coming straight for it. But eventually he just gave up and he just flew over top of the fence. I didn't, from over there I couldn't see how high that fence really was. Could you see him when he was right here? Oh yeah, I could see him trying to poke his head through. I just about tried to shoot him right then. Because I was like, man, he may not get through that sucker. But he's, he was bound and determined to get out there. I'm glad that he stood around there. That's why I like using decoys when I'm, you know, trying to film it myself. Otherwise, it's, it's just Im almost impossible without a blind, you know, because they come in and... He may have never went across that fence. No, he'd have probably come right up that fence and looked out here, not seen a hen, and left. <laughs> Successfully submitted. Bird is checked in now. That's really cool how they do that, you know, <laughs> with that app. Easy, makes it way easier. I can remember when he was kids, you had to take him down to Abel's and weigh him on the <laughs> meat scale. <laughs> I know, you'd have to take <laughs> him over to Kevin Kreider and have him check him in for you. <laughs> I mean, the app is handy, but it was kind of cool checking in your stuff because oh, yeah. you could show all your buddies and just talk to other people and that sort of thing. Go down there and be a whole parking lot full of people talking turkey. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for coming with me, man. Yeah, things couldn't have worked out much better, did they? No, he come in perfect. He was quiet, though, for the longest time. Usually hunting public land down here, and I probably will again this week. You kill two turkeys here in Missouri. I wanted to hunt up here at the home farm one day, at least this year. Every year I try to get back up here at least one time. My dad killed his first turkey right here in this opening. I killed my first turkey 100 yards from this spot. We've killed a bunch of them right up here. The spot means a lot to me, so I wanted to just come in here one morning and try to get one on my birthday and it worked out. Sure did. As soon as he fired off, he's like, I know right what to do with him. <laughs> <laughs> you see that old tree stand right here too? That old wooden that old wooden ladder stand? Yeah. Me and Dad built that when I was like six. Yeah. And put that there. Let's get him down to the house and show Dad and he'll be pretty tickled with that because he hadn't been hearing him. I might even turn him into a good little breakfast sandwich. Yeah, that might not be a bad idea. It's a pretty spot up here on top of this hill. Wake up and walk out on the porch and take off hunting back in here. My grandpa bought this place back in the, I believe it was the late 70s. And me and my dad moved into that house over there on that hill when I was a uh, sophomore or junior in high school, probably. And we've been hunting this property since I was a little kid. Like I said, I actually killed my first deer right here in these woods. 
I think a couple years later, me and dad were in there hunting and I killed a, I shot a eight pointer. He came and died right here. It was the first nice buck that I ever shot. First turkey, first deer, first buck, everything right here in about 150 yard span. <laughs> yeah, come here and have a look at him. You look like you just woke up. Cold, I got it. I'll see you got your new t-shirt on. <laughs> and did you kill him here? Yeah, right up in the food pot. Did he gobble? Yeah. So I you. think you're getting hard of hearing. He ain't said nothing for two weeks, I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> you got a tape measure so I can measure him? I know Steve the tail. I've seen this on TV. I don't have my cheaters on. 48. 48 incher. Yeah. yeah. Can't break that barrier. No, can't get to 50. But he does have a short little snood on him. Look at the turkey, Triton. There's two, three gaps. No, on our on our side, the main the main middle gap. Is that pretty cool? Yeah, touch him. Touch him. Whoa. <laughs> like a hot stove. <laughs> we might have to clean that turkey up and put some Neil's all-purpose spice on him quick. Just got this bird back up here to the house and me and Neely are gonna clean him up quick and then we're gonna cook some, what did you call them? Wild turkey breakfast sandwich. Wild turkey breakfast sandwiches. <laughs> we're gonna show you how we do that. First, we're gonna show you how we dress these turkeys. Flip them over backwards just like this. Take you a good sharp knife and you cut right down this breastbone. I just like to make a little incision there. And then you just take that skin. What I like to do is just peel the breast out of them and then take the thighs and the legs. I don't I don't pluck them whole very often, but if you were wanting to put them in a deep fryer or something like that, you could. Once you get some of that skin off there, I'll take these legs and pop them off. What you can do is they'll just, those thighs will snap back just like that. Now you've got that whole breast that you can work with. I'm gonna do here is start right here on the breastbone. Cut right along that breastbone right there. And you're just gonna run your knife right there along that bone, along the inside. It's pretty easy to do. Just run that knife right along the inside of that bone. You can see how that meat is peeling back right in there. You can see this little bone right here that you're gonna hit right on the bottom of the breastplate. You'll have to excuse the highway noise. We're real close to the road right here. You're gonna cut right down that bone. You're gonna follow it right down. Just like that. She just peels right off there. Cut some of this fat off the top here. I like doing that. You just follow it all the way down here to the wing joint right there is the joint of his wing and you're gonna have to be more careful around it you almost have to round your knife around the top of it to get as much meat as you can and then she just kind of peels right out of there just like that and before i cut it all the way off i like getting rid of this fat it's just easier to do right there and then you got a big chunk of breast meat cut the other one off and you got the same thing on that side. I'm gonna show you quick how to cut these uh, thighs off. You can kind of see where you're coming off the breastbone. You can see this little round bone here. And then you're gonna just take your knife and cut down in there. And right here, you can see that ball joint. Zoom way in on that, Neil, so they can see that. Yep, right there you can see that little ball joint. That's that hip socket. And if you break that, which I think I might have already done, can see how it peels out of there just hold it's just held on by tendons you cut down through there just like that and that is how you get your thigh off there you're gonna get some feathers on the meat but it all comes off pretty easy <laughs> all right there we go and now we've got us a turkey leg and thigh right there and I'll show you how to cut his feet off in a minute if you want to save your spurs and it also will help you get rid of that leg joint right there so that that skin will just peel off we'll go to his leg right here you don't need a saw or anything you just got to cut right there at the joint of his leg with your knife there we go i just felt it 
and that pops down just like that. All you got to do is just cut those tendons off with your knife. Leg comes right off. Then you can save that for later and you know a lot of folks like to cut the spur off, put it on a necklace or something, uh, do a number of different things with it. Now we'll go back to the thigh and the leg and now that we got that peeled off, all you do is peel that skin back, it comes right off. There's your leg and thigh. And you can take that thing and cook it whole in a crock pot. Obviously you want to peel the rest of the feathers off of it and clean it up good. But you could take that whole thigh and leg and put it in a crock pot and then pull the meat off of it. You can make pot pies with it. We're going to take them thighs, we'll put them in a bag there. You just repeat on the opposite side. And you can either pluck the beard right out of there or you can just take your knife and cut a little bit of that fat off. And to be honest, I like to cut a little bit of the fat off and then just put salt on it. It seems like that uh, over time those strands will stay in the beard better that way if you leave a little bit at the base. A lot of folks just pop it right off, but I found that you, you risk losing more of the beard strands when you do that. About a quarter inch back, cut that beard right off. Now you're going to have some exposed meat right there that you're going to want to salt. And what I'll do is I'll just put borax or salt on that and then lay it on a paper plate or something. There's the beard. So we got us a beard, got us a leg. We're gonna repeat that process on the other leg. On the right side of the bird, we're gonna take that breast off, that thigh off, doing the same thing. And the last thing that a lot of folks want is the tail fan off of it. This guy's got a pretty tail fan. You come back here to the back. Right there above his rump, and you're gonna take your knife kind of spread those feathers out there and you can kind of see right above his rump there's some meat right there they call that the vent yep that's the vent <laughs> you're gonna cut right above that thing and you'll be able to feel the bone in there you can kind of see right there that bone and I'll try to spread those feathers out see that one right there it's actually I think it's a bone you cut right in between there and then you've got more the more meat that you cut off the back the more of those uh, back feathers you're gonna retain. There you go, and you leave a little bit of that skin on there if you want, and there's your fan. So you take that meat and you salt that real good. You salt the end of the legs real good with borax or something. That works too, beard. And then I'll just take a sheet of cardboard, splay that fan out how you want it after you get it boraxed, and then I'll just put thumbtacks on the end of the th on the end of the fan, maybe it may take a few of them that you put in the feathers, and you hold it all the way wide open. Leave it on that cardboard with the beard and the feet, and uh, put it somewhere where the bugs can't get to it. And give it a few weeks, and it'll harden up like that. And then you can uh, get you a mounting kit, and I'll post a link to one of those in the description below. New Age Taxidermy has a real cool little kit that uh, can mount your fan and your beard. You've uh, got the fan, the beard, the spurs, the breast meat, the thighs, and now we gotta go in and cook him. All right, we're back at the house. We're gonna cook up a little bit of this turkey breast that War Britain just killed. What we're doing today is we're just taking a tender here and we're gonna kinda slice it up into sandwich sized pieces, split it right down the center. That'll make two real nice little breakfast sandwiches. There's nothing better than Fresh meat after a fresh kill. Take anything, kind of tenderize that, flatten it out. That way it cooks evenly. I just take a back of my knife and kind of plop it a little bit. And where's that tender located at, Neely? It's just right on the inside of the breast. You know, everybody likes chicken strips or whatever. That's usually what they use most tender part of a turkey or chicken any kind of bird is that tender flour that up and put that on a then bagel and that'll be good eating it's a great recipe to use right after you kill a bird because you can take that tender out and then you can freeze the turkey breast i call it you know wild turkey breakfast sandwich but you can eat them anytime they're that good 
a little flour here. Just enough to dredge this turkey. You don't need a whole lot. I'm going to take... Now this seasoning is my own personal seasoning. I spent some time on. We'll put a link in the description below when it is available. Hit it both sides real good. I use this seasoning almost like a rub. You can really cake it on there. Kind of smoky. It's got some garlic in it, salt, some peppers. You don't have to have it soaking completely, but just enough to get it to pan fry nice. Come over here to the stove and we're going to render your bacon down. Now after this bacon renders, you want to leave the fat in the pan. That's what we're gonna fry this turkey in. Oh, I hit my bacon with just a hair of black pepper. <clears throat> to render this bacon, I just got the heat on the lowest it'll go. Back here, I got water boiling, and then I'm gonna poach our eggs in there rather than pan fry them or whatever. Just put a little bit of vinegar in there, just like a cap full, get it boiling. Whenever we get ready to build our sandwiches, we'll drop them eggs in there. And when you're doing that, you want to spin it water that way that the whites congeal and they're kind of hooked to the yolk. That way you can dip them out of there and they'll lay right across their sandwich. And that way you can slice it and that yolk just, it's almost like a sauce. It just oozes all over the plate. Dip the sandwich in it. It's awful good. Flip your bacon here. Once it's all ready and good, we'll set it to the side, leave the grease in the pan. And then we're going to put a little bit of butter in there just to give us enough to pan fry the turkey. And when we pan fry the turkey, we'll set it to the side once it's finished. And I'm going to add a little milk and flour to it and make a gravy to pour over the top of these sandwiches. I got the oven preheated 350, mainly because I don't have a toaster. And we're making these sandwiches out of bagels. So I'm just going to throw my bagels in the oven and toast them up whenever it gets hot. Boy, that bacon smells good, don't it? Yeah. <laughs> I can just eat it all the time. Also got some sliced tomato Lay them on top of the sandwich as well. May give it real good flavor. If you like tomatoes, if not, don't put them on there. <laughs> I've always enjoyed, especially with wild game, I've always been, you know, in the kitchen messing with it and trying new things. <clears throat> as I got older, it kind of developed into a career, you know, I wanted to learn more about it as much as I could about it. So I went to culinary school. I went to Le Cordon Bleu in St. Charles in my free time. I'm all, usually right here at home working with wild game and trying new recipes. I've come up with a really good seasoning that hopefully everybody likes. But I have got my business started, you know. If you see anything that says Neil's on it, it's probably pretty good. <laughs> Take your bacon, get it on some paper towels. Some butter. Does your all's butter look like that at home? You got toast crumbs in it. And <laughs> Everything else, just gonna go right in with your turkey. May just kick it up just a hair to let it recoup. Simmering nice. You don't need nothing too crazy. Piping hot. You just want to pan fry this till the flour, you know, turns golden brown, good and crispy. Call that the GBD, golden brown delicious. Probably three or four minutes on each side. These tenders, you slice them in half like that, they won't take a whole lot of time to cook. But you do want to make sure you get them cooked through. If you're not sure, and you got a thermometer or something, you'll, you know, any kind of poultry or fowl, you want it at least 165 degrees. Since we got that going, I'm going to go ahead and attempt to do a couple of these eggs. You want to get a good spin on it, let your water, when it's spinning like that, it'll help the whites. If you just throw them in there and let it boil, the water whites will separate from the yolk if you get the water spinning theoretically it should just make it wrap around itself while it's cooking and have one good solid piece of poached egg it don't take long for them i like leaving the yolk runny like i say this makes a good sauce Good rich flavor. 
Have you a slotted spoon so you get rid of the water. Oh yeah, turning out nice. Set him to the side. See what I mean? Golden brown. That's a money maker there. That'll be a good one. About time to do some bagels. The old baby doll. I lost all my water. I like this new tone vent hood. Put that in just the other day. <laughs> Take it out of pan. Got all this good grease here. We're gonna add just a little flour in here. Make you just a little pan gravy sauce here. What are you doing? I'll well, just make it a little gravy, pour on top of these. Put your flour in there and mix it in with your fat, whatever kind of fat you'll be using. And then you just add your milk. Be enough salt from the bacon and my seasoning from frying the turkey in here that you won't have to season this too much. I can already see the pepper and other spices in there that just naturally fell off. You want a little more salt, there ain't nothing wrong with it, just throw it in there. And don't tell your cardiologist. <laughs> He might frown upon it. Taste buds won't. Do you change the heat for the gravy or no? No, just hot enough to where it'll bring that milk to a boil. Kind of if you don't cook your flour long enough, when you're making gravies and stuff, it'll have a kind of a bitter, starchy flavor. Bringing that milk to a boil kind of cuts that out. Check our bagels. Toasted nicely. All right, let's build one. Let's start out here with a bagel. I'm going to go in with a slice of tomato on the bottom. Had to move my GoPro over so you could see it. All right, so we got the tomato, turkey. Don't forget your bacon now. And three good slices of bacon on there. Then we're going to go in with a poached egg. And a, do a little of our gravy. You can't be a bashful eater with this because it's going to be a mess, but by God, it's going to be good. And then I'll take my knife, cut right down the center and get that yolk and everything popping. See that? That, my friends, is going to be absolutely delicious. Mm. Wild turkey breakfast sandwich. Awful good. That's it, folks. <laughs> Thanks for watching this video. If y'all liked it, give it a like. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. Uh, me and Neely are going to eat some breakfast sandwiches. Go out and kill you a turkey and try these. They're awesome. They are really good. But thanks for watching. We'll see y'all next time.